latter part of March 1941, the district governor, Mel Miller, came uh, to visit Livingston and discussed with a few the possibilities of organizing the Lions Club. And a preliminary meeting was called with dinner at the Cottage Inn and was attended by approximately a dozen men. And after discussion, it was decided definitely that a club would be organized here. The first call business meeting was held at the City Hall on April 4th, 1941. And there was about a dozen members there, of course. After the election of officers who were to serve the remainder of the 1941 club year, as well as the 42 club year, two committee chairmen were appointed, B.A. Glover, for the Charter Night Committee and Harry Collins for the Membership Committee. May 8th was selected as Charter Night and at 8 p.m. at the American Legion Hall with our ladies and guests present, the Charter was presented. Hello, my name is Kathy Freeman and I am currently the president of the Livingston Lions Club. It was started in late March of 1941 and it was agreed that the club would be formed and the first called meeting, business meeting was held in, at City Hall on April the 4th, 1941. It was decided that they would meet every Wednesday at noon. And I believe that that's a big part of the success of the club is you build a better relationship and a closer relationship when you meet every week. There's so few clubs and organizations that continue to grow like the Lions Club. The motto of the Livingston and the International Lions Club is we serve. And I believe that that's another reason for our success. The members of the club all enjoy serving other people. We get joy out of it and it's a blessing to each and every one of us. I became president July 1st of 2015. Uh, my husband passed away June 17th, and my son-in-law died in a car accident the 14th of June. And the support from this club, I realized that I couldn't make it without them. I came to the meeting, was installed, and the help and just the support from the club made a big difference in my life. Well, I'm Ben Ogletree, Jr., and I really go back an extra generation because my father, Ben Ogletree, was one of the charter members of the club in 1941. And at that time, I think I even, as a very small boy, visited the club with him a few times in the old Cottage Inn Hotel. In 1963, Sidney Smith, uh, who had an accounting practice and was our accountant and was a lion, asked me to joined the Lions Club and he served as my sponsor. Uh, I think I recall that Jack Jackson was the president. The Lions Club has been a, a really good and rewarding experience. I've seen it do lots of good for lots of people. Good projects, a lot of fun with uh, the club members at the meetings and in uh, fundraisers and, and seeing the money spent on good projects that better the community. I guess the most vivid memory I have is when the club went straight, probably in about 1965 or so. Or, uh, we were having fish fries and boys nights out. It was a all men's club at that time and we would have them at someone's camp house or hunting lease. Uh, and they were moderately rowdy with uh, some dice games and card games going on and a bottle being passed occasionally. They just which I know it's probably hard to uh, figure that that would happen at a Lions Club party, but uh, we had a Methodist minister at that time that decided that he needed to straighten up the Lions Club, and so he read us all the riot act, and we went straight. Uh, and uh, to the club's credit, we did it without uh, very much grousing, and uh, everybody just kind of realized that we were on the wrong tack and needed to straighten up as a civic club. So. We've been straight ever since, uh, more or less. Dr. Gus Browning was pastor at the First United Methodist Church here in Livingston. And he came out to the, what I thought was Newman Haynes' camp house. And Gus came in, and Gus was anti-gambling, anti-drinking, like most preachers. And he, he immediately made them resign from the Lions Club. Well, I knew I wanted to join either the Rotary or the Lions, and I figured that uh, my daddy was Rotarian, and I would go ahead and join the Lions Club to change up. 
And I was never been pr prouder of that any, than the moment I joined right there. Well, I, I, it goes back a long ways. I guess I, I first became aware of the Lions Club <clears throat> when I was a freshman in high school, which was in 1952. And uh, our, my vocational agricultural teacher, who by incidence was a Rotarian, but for some reason or other, uh, he always mentioned the Lions Club and all of the support that they gave to our local FFA chapter. And uh, the people that were in the Lions Club were also uh, prominent businessmen in the community. And a lot of them, you know, belonged to the Methodist Church, which I was a member of. So uh, I remember the Lions Club sponsored a lot of different awards. Uh, they were a lot of help to uh, sending delegates to the state and national FFA conventions and uh, very active with our our livestock show and and uh, it kind of made an impression upon me at that time. I know that uh, Mr. Eddie Duke, who was a lifelong member, always uh, had an annual fish fry for the members and there were just numerous uh, humorous events that took place at those fish fries, but it was uh, it was very enjoyable to go to, to say the least. I think it's an excellent opportunity to uh, not only participate in, in community service, but it gives you an opportunity to, to meet and be with people that you wouldn't ordinarily see in other aspects of your daily life, whether it be with the, the church or with your work or whatever organization you may, may belong to on Wednesday. I always look forward to it because I see people that I don't see but just that one time a week and I enjoy that very much. And then the, of course the service part of it is extremely rewarding. My name is Eddie Lewis. I've been a Lions member since 1974. Uh, I started out in the Woodville Lions Club. They were established I think in 1948. A man named Doug Taubert I think was the president at, at that time. Uh, after that, I was a member of the Chester Lions Club. Uh, I was happy to be a member of the Chester Lions Club. My dad was one of the charter members back in 1949 when they were formed. As a child, I got introduced to Lions Club at about, probably about four years old. My dad carried me on a horseback ride one day and uh, I was in the saddle and he was leading the horse. I was too young to, I was holding on to the saddle horn and there was a new Lions Club sign that was about so big with the lines on it. And uh, as we rode by it, my dad told me, he said, don't hit that sign. And so as soon as he turned his head, I slapped that sign real hard and the horse reared up and came down, almost hit him. And I fell off the saddle, but I hung on to the saddle horn. And uh, I would say it didn't end well, but I did get, <laughs> I did find out that Lions Club could be exciting. One of my favorite stories about Lions Club here was Mr. Ernest Reuter when he got the Broken Tail Award one time. Uh, he was cleaning out his concrete truck downtown and Ward Jones drove by and Mr. Reuter had his hose in his hand and he just sprayed Ward Jones. And Ward Jones stopped and got out and was pretty mad and it wasn't Ward Jones. It was somebody Mr. Reuter had never seen before. So anyway, Mr. Reuter started apologizing and, and I think it worked out all right, but the club gave him the Broken Tail Award. I don't know what happened to that award, uh, but it used to be given quite often in the early days. I would say most of all, I have received, I would say, a lot from Lions Club myself. And it's mainly been the people that I have met, the people, the Lions members that I have come in contact with at an early age, there in my early 20s, whenever I became a Lions member. I think those members, their character, their, their honesty, their giving of their time has helped make me a better person, or at least I hope it has. But I think if Lionism has done a lot for me, it's been the men and women that have had an influence on my life. I'm Dr. Woody Reese. I'm a retired dentist from here in Livingston. I joined the Lions Club in June 1960. I was invited by Alan Peoples, who was president of the First National Bank, 
and he was president at that time. The Lions Club used to have cookouts, which was sort of like a guinea supper at the present time there. And we'd go out into uh, the river bottom to Galloway's Lake and have a cookout there. And uh, everybody would have fun shooting dice or having a good time. And uh, it was quite enjoyable there. We did this for several years. And then as we got more mature, got out of our teenage foolishness there, well, we uh, started behaving ourselves. In the mid 80s, uh, we needed more money, so Pete Mintz came up with the idea of selling Christmas trees. So for about three years, we went and gathered our own, harvested our own Christmas trees there. Then after that getting, uh, encounter with the fire ants, we decided to go ahead and buy them. And uh, since then, it's been a good money maker for us there. The reason I joined the Lions Club, because my dad and my brother had both been presidents of the Lions Club in Grofton. So I had grown up with Lionism. I joined in October of 1971. Dr. Bob Cook asked me to join the club. Uh, Edney Duke was the president that year. Well, I just moved to town in 68 upon graduating the University of Texas and thought it was a good opportunity to get to meet people in the community and uh, just always liked to meet people and talk to them, so I thought that was a good way to do it. We was having the uh, Lions Club Christmas banquet, and back in those days, the tail twister would cut off ties for some reason or another, and Joey Pettigo happened to be the uh, tail twister that year, and we had a banquet at the old Ice House, which is now Bill Watson Enterprises. And a bunch of people were on stage. Jim Peters was on stage. And Jim had a tie on that Carol had given him, a real special tie. Was, I think it was an Aggie tie. Well, Joey cut that off. And uh, that was the last time any ties were cut off. Carol wasn't real happy about that move. Well, I think the youth needs to get involved in our, in Lions Club, Rotary Club, some clubs, something to help their community. It seems like the young people nowadays are not joining anything. Uh, so they need to get involved for that reason. They, get to, they, they don't know how many people they'll get to meet. Uh, I know we're not in here to promote our businesses, but it does help your business when you get to meet people. They find out who you are. They'll trade with you. Uh, but I just, I just think young people need to get involved to, to keep the community vibrant. There's a lot of things they can do, and they don't think they can do it, but they can. I joined the Lions Club because I, I saw in the Lions Club an opportunity to do things and accomplish things that I, I couldn't do as an individual. When uh, a group of people get together and pool their assets and their talents, they can get things, a lot more th things done than they can as an individual. I think the Lions Club helps our community in a lot of different ways. Uh, as I see it, the main thrust of, of our activities in the community is to help those that are less fortunate, uh, those that are not able to help themselves. And uh, I don't know, it always got to my heart that, that we were able to do things for crippled children. One of the things I recall is uh, when Sidney Smith was president of the Lions Club, he wanted to have an attendance and membership drive, and he divided the club up into four teams, as I recall. And each week, they had a way of keeping scores, and uh, the team that had the lowest score would win the prize every week. However, the prize was keeping a little pig, a little live pig, all that next week, taking care of it, feeding it, bringing it back to the club meeting the next week to be awarded to some other lucky team. And we had a lot of, a lot of fun with the pig. I would tell the youth uh, today about the Lions Club, again, as it's a means of doing things uh, that you can't do by yourself. It's a, it's a way to get together with uh, other people who, who share your vision of helping the community and helping the people. 
and that's one of the main reasons I've always enjoyed being a Lions Club. The Lions Club crippled children camp probably is the, when our kids were small, you know, like this, we passed by the camp and saw the sign Lions Club camp and we were on vacation. And so Faye and I went on up the road a ways and turned around came back. I told her this is probably the first only time we'll ever get to see it. We went in and went to the office and this man, uh, they introduced us to this man and said he would take us around and show us. And we around, went around every building, every room that things were going on in. He explained to us what was going on and we came back to the office and went to leave. And before we left, I said, before we need, I need to ask that man something. She said, well, he's gone. I said, I'm, but did you know that he is completely blind? And I mean, we didn't know anything about him. We came back and I immediately took out a payment and I've been paying for 50 years on um, to the Lions Club camp. Well, I like Lions Club. My dad was a Rotarian, but that was a Oh, boy. <laughs> I was a young squirt. Well, one of my finest memories was uh, we had a convention down in Galveston. And they, they brought our breakfast to our room. And that's the first time I ever had that. If you want to really get to know Livingston and you want to meet people that are sort of the leaders of you know, the town, join Lions Club. My name is Gary Davis. I've been a member of the Lions Club since 1986. I grew up uh, in the Lions Club. My dad was a member and he was a real active member. And I recall as a small child, spending a lot of time with him, doing different Lions Club functions. Uh, some of the more memorable functions were the uh, mop and broom cell. And back in those days, all the men would uh, load all the mops, brooms, and supplies onto a, a trailer, and they'd go through the, the neighborhoods and go door to door. And I always remember how much fun they had doing that. And uh, so growing up in that culture, I, uh, I wanted to be a line. And as soon as I got into the business world here, uh, I became a member and uh, have enjoyed it. I've uh, currently got a 28 year perfect attendance uh, going. I don't plan on losing that. I enjoy coming and not many things would deter me from being here each Wednesday. Came in when Bill Mays was the president in 1986. Um, of course, influenced by my dad, uh, a good friend of mine, Bill Wiggins, who's a current member, and I, we joined at the same time. It's a funny story. Uh, we had a tail twister named Barry Ogletree, and uh, Barry uh, initiated us, brought us to the front, and he gave us each a mop or a broom to hold, and he had a little bow of, uh, of a limb from a, a pine tree, and uh, he had a light bulb. We used to be involved in light bulb sales, and he had a little song written he had to sing. So he humiliated us in front of the club by singing this song about the sales of mops and brooms and light bulbs and Christmas trees. And it was to the tune of Jingle Bells. Of course, we didn't know that nobody had ever done this before. And I know for a fact that nobody's ever done it since. So I guess I'm the only one that ever got that initiation coming in. But it was all done in great fun, and, and it's been memorable knowing that we were the only ones to ever have done that. Lions Club does so much for our community uh, that, that, that goes unseen. Uh, the money that we raise for all the different youth activities, for all the uh, different organizations that support battered women and, and abused children, those are some of the most important things that we're doing now. Unfortunately, there's such an increase in those types of uh, causes for us to support but uh, we gladly do support those. I, uh, I would encourage young people to join the Lions Club for the same reason that I joined, to, to help with our community uh, in an effort to make it a better place to live. Our motto, we serve, I think 
is simple enough and whoever came up with that idea was, was brilliant and that is so simple. We serve. We as the club serve the, the, uh, the community and I think every line is very uh, aware of that motto. We, particularly with this club, we, we have no problem fielding uh, crews to do our Christmas tree sales, our mop and broom sales, sell tickets to our various things that we do like the fish fries or our raffle tickets. Everybody in this club pitches in and helps and we do serve. I have tremendously enjoyed being a member of Lions Club. The friendships that I uh, have uh, established here and maintained, some of these people I only see here on Wednesdays. I look forward to seeing these people. They mean a lot to me. They're special friends. We work side by side at these different functions. Lions Club is so much more than just us serving the community. We also get a great reward for coming and seeing our friends 